So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. So this is gonna take place in California, right? Yeah, so I guess we're gonna start the movie with the song California Love. <laughs> of course we are, sir. Otherwise, of how course. would people know that this takes place in California? There's no other way. I wish I knew of a different way, but that's the only one. <laughs> so we're gonna meet this guy, Bud, okay. right? And he's working as a pool cleaner. Oh, nice! Except he's not actually a pool cleaner. <laughs> You f***ing lied to me? What? No, it's cause it's it's a front for him being a vampire <laughs> hunter. Oh, that's even more exciting than oh, being a pool no. cleaner. Oh, I feel much better now. Well, good. So face. this guy's killing all vampires, right? Because all vampires are evil. Oh, wow, wow, wow. All of them. Wow. So he goes into this house and he gets in a fight with this old lady vampire and she's super that bendy and acrobatic. Oh, insane. the flexible undead are tight. So he manages to <laughs> kill her and take her fangs. What does he do that for? Well, turns out these things are worth lots of money and the older the fangs, the more money they're worth. That's Why? Correct. Because. That works. So anyway, Bud goes to see his ex-wife and she wants to take their daughter and move to Florida because school and braces are expensive. Mm, can't relate because of how rich I am, but go on. So Bud <laughs> convinces her to give him five days to come up with 10000 thousand dollars then maybe they won't leave oh he's gonna have to sell a lot of fangs for that or you know not a lot i don't know how the fang economy <laughs> works so the pawn shop guy he goes to doesn't want to really give him a lot so his friend big jay's gonna help him rejoin the vampire hunter union where they pay better prices and these fangs are valuable right. because of how much money they're worth that makes sense <laughs> so bud gets assigned a union rep named seth to keep an eye on him okay and they're both gonna get into an exposition battle and quiz each other on That's stuff right. they both already know why well, they got like a bunch of world building I want to dump on the audience, so they're just gonna kind of do that for a while. Gotcha, so what kind of world building are we talking? Okay, well there are five types of vampires, right? That's Southern, right. Eastern, Spider, Uber, and Juvenile. Okay. And juveniles are also called zombie vamps. Right. And they can't regenerate like the older vampires, so they look more dead than alive. Okay, let me just, let me write some of this down, maybe. And they can't process human blood yet, so they feed on small animals. Small animals. And vampires typically live separately, but when they are together, they develop a natural hierarchy based on age. It's kind of a lot of information. Sunlight's the only thing they're afraid of, and they can't reproduce, but they can turn people. Jeez. And vampires have familiars. The more powerful the vampire, the more powerful the familiar. Okay, this is kind <laughs> of a lot, but I imagine this is going to be really important to know later. Uh, you know what? Not so much, no. Well, then why are we... So anyway, then Seth is going to get so <laughs> scared on. of a vampire that he pees in his pants. <laughs> oh, pee-pee. Pee-pee. <laughs> pee-pee, very funny. What about poo-poo? No poo-poo, no poo-poo. <laughs> no poo-poo, just pee-pee? Okay. Yeah, so that's going to be a recurring joke. <laughs> what about that's going to be a main one that we come back oh, to him peeing his pants. Right. Good. So anyway, then they're gonna end up in this he house where there are actually a bunch of different types of vampires like living together, which shouldn't really be possible. So it's like, whoa, what is going on here? Okay, well that's gotta be important to know later. That seems significant. No, that's not gonna come up again. <laughs> okay, you know what? And we're also gonna meet the big bad guy of the movie. Her name is Audrey. Oh. And what's her deal? Why is she evil? Well, she works in real estate. Oh, that is pretty <laughs> evil. That's good. Yeah, oh, but God. also she's a vampire and she wants that's to right. take over the housing market and fill it up with vampires vampires who wear sunscreen. What? So they could go in the sun a little? That seems to be what I've written here. I don't know what to tell you. Wow, all right. Oh, and seems also that be. old vampire that Bud killed at the beginning of the movie? Yeah. Yeah, it turns out that was Audrey's daughter, right. so she's pissed about that. Oh, so she wants revenge on Bud? She does, yeah. Real estate sunscreen and revenge. That's kind of her entire deal. <laughs> well, it. good to know. So what's she gonna do? Well, she's gonna go kill that pawn shop guy to get some information, and Bud's gonna find his body. Oh, well, at least he can take what he needs from the pawn shop and solve his money problems. Hey, shut up. And also, she <laughs> sends him a assassins after Bud and his daughter. Uh oh. So they're gonna have this crazy so chasing where his daughter almost gets killed several times that's and right. sees multiple people die. Oh my god, that's horrible. That's definitely traumatizing that's for a child. No, she's like, that was awesome. <laughs> she liked when the people were killed and she almost died. Okay, good. But then when they get to his ex's house, it turns out Audrey's already there. Oh no. Yeah, and so she's already turned Seth into a vampire and now she wants to turn his family into vampires in front of him. It's gonna be tough for him to get out of that situation. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. <laughs> an inconvenience. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, because see, Audrey takes his family and she, you know, she leaves. So she wants to turn them in front of him. Why doesn't she do that while well, she no has sense. them and she's in front Thank of him? Well, she didn't feel like doing it there. She felt like doing it somewhere else. Won't that in just give cave. him time to prepare? And so that Temple. gives Bud time to prepare. Right. So he <sighs> teams up with vampire Seth and his neighbor Heather, who it turns out is also a vampire. Wait, who's his neighbor? <laughs> it's this woman he had one single interaction with and she apologizes. She's like, I'm sorry for tricking you, but Audrey made me do it. it. But what trick. did she even do? Nothing. 
nothing. nothing. I thought you said Literally all vampires nothing. were evil. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess some aren't. It doesn't really matter. Doesn't that imply <laughs> doesn't. that over the course of Bud's career, he may have murdered multiple good vampires? Right. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> oh, okay. So then the good guys managed to defeat the bad guys. Mm. Amazing. And Seth is going to be all proud because he didn't pee-pee in his pants this time, nor did he poo-poo. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Bring that pee-pee joke back in here. I wasn't done with the pee-pee joke yet. Bring it back in. And Heather's going to be like, vampires don't pee or poo. That is an actual, that is a real line from this movie that I've written here. And I'm signing <laughs> off on it. So then Bud's ex-wife decides to give him another chance, and it seems like Seth's <laughs> gonna be all right. Didn't she oh, just find out that he has an God. incredibly dangerous job that That's almost right. got them all killed? Yeah, so I guess she liked that. That made her feel like her daughter's safe. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. And so then we'll have another joke about what? poo particles causing pink eye, and then we're done. So what do you think? <laughs> well, it sounds like a good time, but hey, maybe we could sprinkle in a bunch of mentions of a mysterious guy named El Jefe and then never pay that off in any way? Why would we do that? Well, just because, I mean, I noticed you didn't say the magic word. Oh, Please? God. No, not that Franchise. word. Money? Well, no, that's an obvious one. Come on, you know what I'm looking for. Do I? You Franchise? know. It starts with an F. It's the <laughs> thing that I'm obsessed with turning every single movie into. Oh, okay, every I got it. Single. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> This pitch meeting actually brought a lot of things that I love from pitch meetings. Obviously, the shut up. Obviously, the pieces on where <laughs> the producer guy will make the most sense of something. And he's like, moving on or shut up or, uh, you know what, don't just don't say anything. He's just like, move on. Let's let this happen. But this one was hilarious because of the, <laughs> the fact he goes, that's a line I actually put in this script. That's a line that's actually in this movie. <laughs> and producer guy's like, I I'm going to sign off on it. Like, He's just showing how crazy these scenarios are. And like these people had to have read these scripts. They had to have read the scenarios that are happening. And they're just like, let's do it. It's always hilarious the way he goes about these. But this was great. I, I love this one. I'm surprised it's taken me a while to see this one. But I just recently watched the movie. So that's one reason why. And I, I enjoyed it. It was fun. But it had a lot of issues. One thing is that this movie, it felt like a streaming movie. There's a lot of movies that Netflix has sometimes where it feels like it's supposed to be watched on a small screen. <laughs> like this movie has no business being on the big screen or in a theater, nothing like that. It needed to be on streaming. And there was aspects to it where it's like, yeah, that just works. Now the action was great. The action was brutal actually. And to a degree, sometimes a little bit over the top, but it worked because it's vampires. You can kind of go all out as you want to, but uh, this one was fun. I think I need to watch bright next. Cause I still haven't watched bright that Will Smith movie with all the, mystical creatures and stuff in the real world i guess kind of situation i need to check that out did bright have the same small screen feel to it though because this movie definitely did day shift but i hear bright is good but i don't know did it feel like you could watch it on the big screen or is it good for a home viewing only i mean it was only on netflix but sometimes you watch stuff on netflix there's been times where you watch something on netflix and it's like oh this could have been on the big screen day shift no bright maybe question mark i haven't watched it yet i know they were talking about doing a I know they were talking about doing a sequel for that, but who knows with the whole Will Smith stuff since uh, the Oscars that, that year. Uh, <laughs> if that's still happening or if they're going to go in another direction. But could this one be a franchise? Sure, it could be, yes. He's a vampire hunter. He could just go all around. We've got how many Underworld movies? Was it Underworld? Elderworld? Underworld? We've got all those Kate Beckinsale movies with the vampires and the werewolves. They could do more of these if they wanted to, and maybe it doesn't cost them that much, so it could happen. But I do feel like a lot of the exposition in this movie didn't really lead to much. Like, they were really building the world and trying to make their own little vampire John Wick uh, type scenario with the union and all that kind of stuff. It felt very copy pasty but with vampires. So that part was kind of like, eh, this is a little bit lame, but... Jamie Foxx keeps it exciting. That, that's all I can say. He keeps it exciting. I need to watch his next one or his most recent one. They clone Tyrone also on Netflix. I need to check that out. I'll do a review on that too. But I want to talk about this just a little bit. I enjoyed it. It's fun, but it does feel very small screen. Uh, kind of like how I did Haunted Mansion, which you can check out right up here, a review on that. That was in theaters, but it could have also very easily been on just Disney Plus streaming only. This movie, it's, it's where it needed to be, but it still felt very small. The acting's okay. The comedy is is good. Uh, the story is very straightforward. But the action is what makes this movie work. And if they do a franchise or just multiple movies from this, I, I'll be here for it. I'll watch it uh, as long as the story makes sense. Like, at least do something where we're actually kind of invested into the characters and care about people. That part I actually enjoy because in this one you don't really other than jamie fox's character but it is what it is have you seen day shift let me know what you think in the comments below also let me know what you think of the pitch meeting again very funny pitch meeting from ryan george he hits everything on the nose the exposition was just 
out of this world and it meant really nothing <laughs> in the grand scheme of things um but very funny one from ryan george on this one so thanks for watching check out the other videos i got here for you guys as always and i will see you guys on the next one take care